my lovelies, I'm Juliet and welcome to Juliet Sewing Life. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial and this tutorial is to help you get used to your sewing machine, use some features you probably won't use unless you do something like this and so it's going to be a bit more fun. Today we're going to be making a sewing feet pouch. I think I said that correctly. And um, I'm doing this because we can basically do one or two things. We're going to be able to stitch a buttonhole so you can get practice on the buttonhole. We're going to use your lettering if you have lettering on your sewing machine. I hope so. It's a computerized one. They tend to have the ABCs. And basically we're going to be having a, a sewing pouch which is going to make sure that all your feet that you regularly use regularly use for your sewing projects for dressmaking will be all at hand and so that's the reason why I've decided to do this tutorial. Okay for this project um, you'll need some fabric, um, any cotton is fine. I'm using calico for the inside I'm using calico for two reasons. It will give it some body and some weight. And also when we're stitching our letters on, it's really quite clear and easy to use. And it's a good firm um, woven texture to, to, to show the letters. So it's 11, point, it, 11 centimeters times nine centimeters for the fabric and for your calico. You'll need pins. You'll need a ruler for marking. You will need a pencil. You'll need a button nice fancy fancy one and your button foot for the actual tutorial and then you're going to have to decide which feet do you want to put in your pouch what's your regular feet that you use I'm going to be doing a zipper a piping foot um, a zip uh, a button foot a button placement a monogram foot and a blind hem foot those are the ones I'm going to be doing so it's going to be six pouches or six compartments one two three four five six yes yeah, six compartments for this so that's all the instruments, all the tools you need, and so I'm going to see you over at the sewing machine. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine now, and just before I start, I want to tell you that depending on how many feet you decide that you're going to do your pouch for, I'm doing six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So basically what I've done is I've just taken my ruler and just done, I think it's two inches, roughly, roughly, there's some of the feet that are so small, like the little button attachment, which is small, which I've just made it slightly smaller because I don't actually need it to be that wide. So roughly two inches apart, as you can see there, it's rough. It doesn't have to be exactly. So you do that at the top and make, you can, uh, excuse me, you can put that on your, uh, just use a pencil. You can always erase it, or you can use a friction pen and then heat will take that away. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to stitch our words in between here. Um, and then it's going to be a nice little guide when we fold up, that's later to come. So what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our normal foot off the sewing machine, put that to one side, and we're going to put our monogramming foot on. So let's get that sorted out. Let's clip that on. Now, um, you'll have to read your manual for your one, but it's basically the same process. Um, I've actually keyed in the first word, which is zipper. I'm not going to put foot on everything because it's clearly a foot pouch. So I'm going to use the word zipper. And if you, if you can see here, there's the code for A, so that's 01, so you'll type in 01. I'm going to stitch out the word zipper, and then the next one I'm going to actually um, put in and key in, and you'll see how I do that. So let's get started. I'm using a really pretty pink, like a hot pink colour, because I want it to pop. So let's go. Remember, we're going to have some seams because you're going to turn it inside out, you're going to sew it onto your back in. So make sure that you're in, in the middle here. And let's just make sure, chest your feet, make sure it doesn't touch your um, thing. You're not gonna, you don't want to break your needle, so that works. I actually did a sample where I stitched it, stitched it out first. So basically, I'm not going to spoil my project. So you use a little scrap fabric of the same type. This is what I always do. Whatever I'm working on, I have a scrap of the actual fabric and I'll use that as a testing for my stitch length um, and the tension and things like that. 
So let's get going. We're going to type the word zipper. I've programmed it in already. The first word is uh, Z and it's going to, that's 01 and then it's going to have about six characters in here. So all I have to do is drop my foot down and start and it's going to type the word for me. Whew, let's go. Oh, exciting. I'm not troubling it. I'm not pushing it through. I'm just letting it do its own thing. See the lap, the counts going down. I'm on the fifth letter. And the sixth letter. And there we go. So now, oh, that's my chest freezer being delivered if you can hear the buzzer go. Okay, so now the next one is going to be zipper and piping. So it's going to be a lot of programming. So let's lift the needle and we'll see what we got so let's cut our threads as you can see oops we've got the word zipper our first word put down and cut our threads and just like in embroidery you just have to snip in between those jump threads snip those and then Hope you can see this, I hope I'm not in the way. There we go. And snip all those jump threads. That's a jump thread. And there we have the word zipper. Gosh, I sounded an American then. Zipper. Um, so there we have it. That's our first word. And then we're going to go on. And I'm going to come back at the end and then I'm going to show you how I program it all in and then you're going to see the last one. So I'm going to stitch all the rest of them, the last one I'm going to program in and then we can see how that goes. And I'll see you back here in a little while. So we're just coming up to the last, nearly the last one. And I'm going to show you how I can program it into the computer, into the sewing machine. Just doing its little jumps. As you can see, the numbers are going up and down. It's the last stitch now. And then it will just absolutely stop to a stop. So you don't have to worry about it. And so now it's stopped. So what I'm going to do is take the foot up. Threads. Put those to the back. Right, that's the work to one side. I have already, oh, I've got my husband to do it. I've already put the numbers in, so all I've got to do now is uh, press that. Oh, no. What are we doing? I'm mm -hmm. So I'm blanking it all out. So now I've got nothing is in there. So now what I'm going to do is my first letter is a B and that's number two. So I'm going to go and then I'm going to press a plus that adds that in. Then the next letter I want is a number 12. So I'm going to add what right there. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to add that in. That's the second letter. Then we're going to have a nine. So we're going to, oh, no, we're going to go. And then we're going to plus. And then we're going to do nine and then we're going to plus that. That's number three. Number 14 is the next one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Gotta get used to this. Oh. <laughs> All right. Four and plus. That's the, There we are. 14. Got there in the end. The fourth letter. And then we want four. So we're going to minus down here and then plus. And that's the fifth letter. And then we want 46. So we're going to plus here. One, two, three, four. And then six. We want plus 46. That's the sixth letter. Then we want, I think that's eight. Yeah. So we're going to go down. And then we're going to plus. And then we're going to plus. That's the seventh letter. And then five. Mm -hmm. And then, so we're going to go down to five. And then we're going to add plus. That's eight. And then the last letter is 13. So we want one up here. And then we're going to go to 13 and plus it here. Um, and that's that, right? Okay, so 
first things first, ladies and gentlemen, let us make sure, number one, we've got it all <laughs> entered in correctly. Number two, our spelling is correct. So let's do it on our practice run first. So let's set that up. And let's see, needle down. Let's do the first stitch, which is number two. So we're looking like we're good to go. You don't need to pull it or push it. You just make sure that it's, it's going straight. I'm not even really touching it. And this is the Brother FS130QC. I love this machine. This is definitely a workhorse. I think it's 600 pounds, but I got it for two, I think I got it for 260 at Creating Craft. I am not going to lie, I'm totally addicted to Creating Craft. <laughs> <laughs> Shopping channels, they've got me, they got my number for sure. So now we've come to the end and it's gone back. Let's put our needle up, let's check our spelling. And yeah, it is the right spelling because we are doing the blind hem. Let's check that. And as you can see with the jump stitch and everything, whether it says blind hem, and that's correct. So we are all go. Now we can bring it to our project and cue that up. And then we can, and we're almost, we've finished. I want to make sure that, yeah, a bit up. It really doesn't matter, but I'm kind of a stickler. We want to keep away from the sides as much as possible because we're going to be um, doing a hem, we're going to be um, encasing things so we don't want to be too close to the sides, so slightly in and I think we're ready to go. This is a great technique, that's why I really wanted to do this uh, tutorial for you. Um, this is perfect for putting your children's names in their uniforms or on their kit. Um, even your husband with his golf clubs, and oh, maybe not golf clubs, but uh, maybe on the caddy and, or, or, and little things like that. It's for perfect for anything that you need to put someone's name on or um, use lettering. And we tend not to use it because we're like, oh, I don't want to, I'm a little afraid of it. But with a little project like this, you're going to be away in no time. You're going to learn how to actually needle up. You're going to learn how to actually program your um, oh runaway runaway scissors. Uh, program your um, sewing machine and really get the features. That's after all. That's the whole reason why you bought um, you bought the machine, right? Because you didn't buy a basic one. You didn't make that rookie mistake. But we're going to jump, um, actually, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to get my embroidery scissors because they are sharp. You see, they're so sharp, they got they come with their little guard. And now I can cut all these little jump stitch and right to the edge, it's sharp right to the edge. So I'm going to just do that here. So we're just going to cut the jump stitches like this. Make sure we don't cut through. And then we'll be able to really make out our words quite nicely. But you do need a very sharp point scissors. It doesn't really so matter much that much. But I do want them as let's have it as flat as possible so you can see. This is a really good technique and I really wanted to show it to you. Because you, as I said, you didn't make the rookie mistake of buying a basic sewing machine that you can, you know, it's got like 10 stitches on and one buttonhole. Because the moment you start, I mean, it's, if you're like a flibberty gibbet and you're not normally, you know, stick to anything for any length of time, then for sure, go to Walmart and buy, you know, your $60 sewing machine or what have you or Argos as it as in, in England's case and buy your 80 pound sewing machine if you're a flibberty gibbet but if you really feel like you know I am going to invest the time to learn the skill to make my own clothes or to um, quilt or whatever it is that you whatever sewing you really set your heart on you really do not want to make a rookie mistake and buy um, a, um, a basic sewing machine because it's really a false economy, it truly is. You'll, be, you'll outgrow it in, so, in no time whatsoever. 
I'm just trying to cut as much of these threads off as possible. I'm going to be covered in pink thread now, hot pink thread. So there we go. So this is just pencil. Once I've finished with all the things, I can just rub it down. So now what we are going to do, put this all here. We are now, what is the next step? We're now going to attach our calico to our pretty fabric. So I'm going to come back to you and I'll show you how that goes. Thank you. Okay, so I'm right back at the ironing board now, just set up. What I want to do is basically take all the creases out and make sure it's all nice. I'm going to go on the back here, I don't want to make any problems on that. Keep that as flat as possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to have right sides together. Like so. And then have the right sides together. Either I was at the Pesceto or something, because I don't think this is quite <laughs> straight. But there we go. Impromptu. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the pretty sides together. And we're going to just pin round, and then we're going to leave a little opening. So, I'm just going to go here, pin it around. Oh, we have a, a complaining iron. Wow. It's never done that before. It's clearly it's big moment. It's like I, this is my moment to be a star, and it stopped. So, oops. So we're just going to pin all the way round. You really don't need so many pins, but this is a beginner's class, and I want to make sure everybody's comfortable. So, so how when I'm going to leave a a, mo a place to turn. <laughs> It'd be, once you get in the groove you'd be amazed how you just whiz past the whole thing so because it's just pins so what I do to make sure that I stop is I always put a cross so I, I go well, what's this and I realized yes you have to stop there so you can turn it inside out so that is my little tip to make sure that you don't over, go over um, and sew the whole thing into a square because then you have to unpick and your unpicker is our best friend as a dressmaker it is our best friend we spend a lot of time with it so I don't think I need any more than that bam so what we're going to do we're going to sew all the way around to have a nice neat edge and we're going to leave a little opening right here and turn it the right way around okay so back to the sewing machine we go Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine now. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take it off our alphabet. So on the uh, Brother FS130QC, all you do is press this button and it takes us back to utility stitches, which is all the, oh, no, no, not that, it's all of these. So zero to one. And so the f next thing we do is we take off our monogram foot. I'm going to find a home for you in a minute. And then we put on our regular sewing foot. There we are, snap that on. Okay, make sure that it's gonna, not going to touch the, um, the plate. Drop our needle down and let's go. Now in the other shot you saw, I'll just leave this up, that I had um, a magnetic um, pin cushion which is fantastic, but you cannot and should not have it anywhere near your computerized machine. Hence why I've got this lovely little thing. Um, because it will destroy your machine. For some people who have magnets by that, I personally am not going to spend this amount of money on a machine only to put a magnet near it because I want to sew in a straight line or something ridiculous. And then I absolutely ruined my machine. I'm not prepared to do that. Let's just go down a bit more. One more. There we are. Turn. Lovely. If you're worried about straight lines and things like that, just use this this outside as your your guide. As long as I'm not a sew over your pin type of girl. I'm going to pivot, 
needle, keep your needle down and pivot. Just go down just a little bit. A hair. Perfect. Right. I think what we'll do is after we press this, I think I'm going to put a decorative stitch. We're going to see how it looks. That's the beauty of making your own little project. You can just decide or, you know, put something decorative stitch on. After all, that's why you've got the hundred and something stitches. You might as well use them. This is an opportunity. Right, we're coming up now to the, um, the part where we're going to be turning. This is the first... cross part let's get that out right the first thing you want to do is you want to go back a bit because we're going to be turning so just go back a couple of ones so just to reinforce that we're going to be doing that again when we do the pouch pockets so we just trim our threads here move on down here enough room yeah there's plenty of room kneel down and then we're going to go back a bit oh. all right let's bring it home oh bang on that's a good feeling okay right needle up let's put my threads Okay, so now we're going to turn it round. Let me try it on the calico side because the cotton is a bit more delicate. Once we've turned it the right way, we're going to press it. Ba -da -bum -bum -bum. Oh, it's coming together, guys. I really wanted to do really small projects that you didn't need a whole heap of fabric for. Oh, no. I forgot to show you that most important thing to get our corners. Get my tools ready. I am jumping the gun. First things first. Before we do that, we have to grade. We have to grade our edges. So, for example, do I have a it should be sharp enough. Make sure we cut our corners so we get a really good tight finish. Last one. We don't want to cut at all our stitches, which is right up to the. Oh, we can go down a bit more here. Plenty more to go here. Right to take it quite close right and I'm just could you pass me the shears black black uh, blue handle blue handle that's the one thank you honey oh. right I am gonna oh, let me get my bin because it's gonna go everywhere it's gonna fray really want to grade the seams this is called grading the seams so we're gonna well actually no this is just trimming let me show you what grading really is so on some dress patterns what you'll find is that can you grade the thing and they'll tell they really want you to um, cut down the interfacing which means this let's say this is your interfacing the calico which means you cut this one down this is called grading you cut this one down close to your stitching like this obviously it's so much better when you're in a flat surface not on your knee but this is impromptu teaching here oh yes that's why you need to have it flat people because then i'm now cut the other part which is not a problem but as you can see you've graded it so this one is shorter than the outer one for the turning purposes but I actually want to cut both of them. So I get a nice even finish. Just don't need so much fabric. 
and the same on this side. Um, you could use your overlocker, which would be perfect for this. Overlocker would be absolutely perfect for this. And it will trim it off nicely. But I just really want to keep it a really nice beginner project for somebody who just got a sewing machine, not a serger or overlocker. So, just using your shears just to trim that all up. So now... We cut our corners, so now when we turn, I'm going to turn on the side of the calico. And turn it round, we're going to have, we won't have the bulk. It's the bulk you're trying to get rid of. And so when you do press it, it's going to be on, it's going to be right on point. Yeah, perfect. Right, here we go. Right. Much better corner, you see? And I haven't even used my pokey tool yet. And you got a better corner, nice neat edges. It's a really simple little project that you could do in no time at all. Plus you're learning all about your machine as you go along, um, which is what Juliet Sewing Life channel is all about. Teaching you how to use your machine, all of it, <laughs> not just a straight stitch and a zigzag, but all of it. So you're getting your money's worth. So right, now we're going to take this across to the, oh, take it across to the uh, ironing board. Get our pokey tool and get in them corners. Oh, they so satisfying when <laughs> you see that corner pop. You see that nicely. That corner comes nice and out. And I tend to use this part here to run along the seam. Run that along the seam. Just poke that out. Oh, nice. And then on this side get the pokey in, get that corner or pop it, oh look at that, nice, and this one, this one had the salvage of the, um, the calico, I love working with calico, it's cheap um, and if you're doing a decorative stitch it will show up, let's use the other side now just to get all that seam out. Okay, right, we're going to take this over to the ironing board now. Alright, so we're back to the ironing board now. So I've turned it out. There's our lovely fabric on one side and our calico with our wording here. So I'm just going to, this is the opening side, so I just tucked it underneath. Just get that. It's so satisfying to see that come out like that. Really gorgeous. I'm going to turn it. Now if you use the friction pen, what will happen is um, the heat would have taken it off. I use pencil. Um, it will come off in the wash and it really is not going to be any kind of problem. But it's very useful now because now we've pressed it. Make sure that your corners are you're happy with your corners. There we go. You could just use a little bit of a. I want the proper rubber. But I don't, this is the only one. <gasps> Sorry, for you Americans, a razor. In England, we call it rubber, and I understand that there's a that will make you laugh, you Americans. I understand how that will make you laugh. My husband said to my son when he was going to school in Hawaii. He said, my son says, oh, I need the rubber. And he's, you cannot say that in clap. You cannot. And we, me and my son was like, what? What do you mean? He's like, no, you have to say a razor. And we were like, why? It's the rubber. Same thing. He's like, no, it doesn't mean the same thing here. So, okay. So let's just use the word eraser, shall we? Um, right. So now that we've have our, we have our wording, we've got zipper, zipper piping, and our buttonhole, button fitting, monogramming foot, and blind hem foot. What we're going to do now is we're going to fold up. We're going to fold up our pouch. 
just like so. And now we're going to have our feet. These are all our feet. And I've got a couple on the sewing machine. Here's the monogramming one. Oh, right. So this is the monogramming one. Blind hem foot. Buttonhole. Zipper. The piping. Zipper and piping and the button fitting one. So it's going to be like so. Okay. What we need to do now is fold this up and we're going to give that a nice little press. What you can do is you can just stitch along here. I mean, I guess what we could do is we could put a nice should we do that? Should we put a nice decorative stitch around to seal it? Yeah, let's use more stitches. Okay, what we're going to do now, back to machine, and we're going to stitch a nice um, decorative stitch all the way around. And then I'm going to fold up. Actually, I might be able to do the fold up now. Let's do the fold up now. I'll figure it out. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Because the feet just need to, they're not that big. It's just this one. I've got to make sure that it will hold in and won't fall out. Right, so about here. Perfect. About there is perfect. I'm just going to fold that and press it. And I'm going to come back to that later. I'm going to put a decorative stitch because we are learning to use our, um, our sewing machine and all the stitches. So let's choose a stitch and let's stitch around. Okay. I'm back at the sewing machine again I decided on stitch number 59 which is this little cute little thing here I've put my monogram foot back on and let us make sure that that is pressed underneath beautiful uh, drop that down okay let's go <laughs> So I, I just went ahead and done that um, and I've just done some decorative stitches. I wonder if you can see that here, just trimming up all the little bits here. And this makes a nice little feature on the outsides. I think if I did that again, I think I'd do it on the outside next time. So that way the, the, the best stitching is on the outside. Um, I guess I'm just so used to looking at the calico. But it looks pretty enough and it closed the edge. So now what we're going to do is we are going to use our lines that we've already drawn for our feet and we're going to now sew our compartments. Now my zipper and piping foot one, that's the one where I personally am going to, oh crikey, I'm going to make it bigger because uh, the, the way that it's like an L shape. So I'm going to make that a lot bigger than any all the others. And the buttonhole one is that can be the smallest. 
Let's make sure. Is that even even? Hold on a minute. I better make sure because I'm sometimes I can be so slapdash, but this is a tutorial and I want it to be right for you guys. Um, right, a slightly. I think the, 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 the stitching has made it sort of go in a bit, sort of bow in a bit, but that's okay. It's not a problem. Right. So yes, I think we're fine. If I do that, then I'm going to have it. It's going to move in a bit. So just be really wary of what your project actually looks like at this moment in time. But I think I'm fine here. Oh, I've got a bent pin here. I have to get rid of that one. The piping foot is definitely the one that needs to be the largest because um, it's an L shape. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, back stitch at the front, at the top here. So we're going to use our back stitching again to reinforce that seam because that is where everybody's going, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out. So I might have to just fudge that over a little bit. There we go. And I'm slightly out on them. So let's go. Okay, I'm going to put, take my monogram foot off and put my regular foot back on. All right. And then we're going to uh, minus. normal okay let's take that out line that stitch up now on your well on my foot I've got a little I don't know if you can see it I've got a nice little line ridge right here I'm going to attempt to line that ridge with this line and that's where the needle will sew See if we got there's the ridge, bring it up a bit. Bam, that should be just right. And I'm moving my needle across. Oh, oh no, that's where my needle is. I want to make sure that's on there. I want my needle to across. That's almost on. Yeah, that's as far over it as it can go. Brilliant. So now I'm just going to move that. Bring my needle up a bit. Move that down. Now. There we go. Perfect. And drop the needle down. And then I'm going to go back to reinforce this seam. Perfect. Now we can just sew straight down. Once again, I'm going to, I've got my little ridge there, I'm going to find my pencil mark, drop it on top of there, and then move my fabric down, and then I can drop my foot, and I'm right there, and I can just back stitch, oops, and then straight down. I really do like this hot pink. It's really cute. Down. Got the needle. Oh, oh no, see. Aww. Live mistakes. Needle down. Let's go back. Now we can go forward. I don't have to be precious about it. That's why I choose these projects for you guys. So we're lining it up with the pencil. We're moving it straight down. There we go. A little bit further down, drop the needle, needle back. There we go, reinforce that seam. Last one, that. 
coming to the last leg and again there's the line move it forward The reason why I'm choosing these projects is I don't want you to be completely precious about anything. I want you to be feel free to make some mistakes. This is your personal pouch. Nobody is going to come to your house and demand that um, that you re restitch this <laughs> or that you've made any mistakes and that we're going to have to cart you away now. So it's really all about gaining confidence, learning the new, the stitches on your on your machine. Trimmed up as possible, um, and just gaining confidence by making really small projects, but utilizing the skills that you will need to either do your quilting, or, or and <laughs> your um, dressmaking projects. So I'm just gonna now. I'm just gonna sew up right on the edge here, and I'm wondering to do whether or not now I just do a straight stitch. Oh, not quite in there. All right. Just checking. I'm on a straight stitch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, step up. Sometimes you have to go a little bit in, needle down, and then go back, and then it should take. And again, here we go. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Needle down. This is going through so many layers and it's handling it like a champ. I'll just go back, reinforce that last one there. Perfect. Needle up. And again. And this one, slightly skew with. Next time I do something like this, I'm going to do another pouch, but for my um, for my quilting uh feet and um i'm gonna all the things i've learned from making this one i'm gonna make sure it's slightly wider at the bottom because once you put the decorative stitch it kind of moves it in a bit so that's <laughs> that's something i learned and you must understand that you can't learn anything unless you make a mistake it's impossible i, I honestly believe you can't learn anything unless you've made a mistake so i just back stitch there my foot and now we're just going to Seal up those ends just like that, perfect. And that's going through several layers, so it's such a great machine. So we have our pouches, so let's put it to the test, shall we? Here is our monogram. Lovely, it fits in there nicely, doesn't move around. Okay, let's see if I can find. Can you get me my other the other feet, please? And let's see. Let's see if they fit in. <laughs> Moment of truth. Here we go. Thank you so much, yes. Thank you so much. Right. So we got the zipper, which is gonna go in here. Perfect. Blind hem. Ooh. And now the zipper and the piper. There we go. I think that's the button fitting and that's the button hole one. There we go, that's our feet. Oh, I'm so pleased. And it's all protected. Right, all that's left to do now is to put a buttonhole on. Now, if I put a buttonhole on, I can do that. That is possible. I'll take all the feet out now. But if I do that, will I lose some of my stitching? Let's have a look. Where did I put my button? Honey, the little button over there, the little black button, please. Thank you. No, um, the, the, the fancy smancy one. There it is. Yes, a little smaller one. Right, if I put that, hmm, I guess I'm going to have to put that here to make sure I can see all my things. 
See, this is on the fly here because I did think I was going to do it here, but now it's looking like it'd be better to have the button here. And then, which will mean the buttonhole. Where would the buttonhole be? Where's the pin? The pin. Then the buttonhole will be here. Oh, that's good. Yes, that means I've got a nice little buttonhole here and I've got a button there and I don't lose my letterings. Um, yay, okay, so let us put our button in. All right, first thing is this, we put our button in. We won't actually be using the button. Um, oh, where did you go? <laughs> Live TV. Button's gone. We won't actually be using um, the, the button attacher because it's it, the button attaches from the um, the button attaches from the um, it's a sew through one. Okay, that's the best one so I can do so. Okay, but it's going to go like that. But I actually want the button to go like this. Can you? Will you? Will you? Let's see, can I get it to, oh, it won't do it. I just want it to go that way, because that way is better for the project. But it won't hold the button steady like that. No, nope, it's gotta be that way. Which means, so, let's see. The button goes here. Hmm, I don't want to lose that hole. Okay, um, I'm going to attach everything and I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. I decided to change the button. Um, this was giving me some problems because it's a nice fancy one, but when I done the buttonhole, which I was able to do, it doesn't quite go through because of the little thing here. So I decided to not complicate my life. I found this little tiddly one. It's not as pretty, but it is functional. So I'm gonna pop it into my buttonhole adjustment thing here, nice and firm. I've selected my button stitch, which I'm gonna go for number 34, I've programmed that in already. It's asking me for foot A, which is my buttonhole foot. And now I'm going to attach that. Sometimes you just have to lift the lever a little bit just to get it in. Oh, let's lift that up. And once that, there we are, that's attached. Now, this was, this, you have to make sure that this grey, can you see, honey, have you got this? This grey thing here, or whatever colour yours is, it comes at the back yes. of this, not the front, because then it doesn't go anywhere. You're like, what's going on? You get E3 or something, you're like, what is going on? I put everything where it's supposed to be. No, not quite. Make sure it's at the back. You see, and it can move forward. And always, always test it out. So I've done two tests on a night on the exact same thing that you normally would before you do it on your project. Okay, so now, okay, so it's going to go down that way. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually do a test one again just to make sure that this is all going to go nicely. So I've already put a little line. You can see here the red the little crossfire here, I'm going to line up this mark with the red marks and have that right in the center of those two crosshairs or ball bullseye or crosshairs, I would say. Could you see, can you, have you got that, honey? Mm -hmm. So, right, so now that we have that, um, let us drop our feed, Let's just pop our project to one side for a minute. Tidy up a bit. Okay, let's get stitching. Up, 
So, what has that taught me? So, what are we learning here? Oops, I'm butterfingers today. Okay, that's taught me that when I put my line across here, that's going to be the bottom. So, bringing it to my project now, this is going to be the bottom and it's going to go up to here. So, now I know that I would like to... Oh, here we go again. Oh, my goodness. I now need to lower this to here because we know that when we start on the crosshairs it goes up from here and I don't want it to go across, um, off my project. So I'm going to bring it to about here and that gives me plenty of room to go up plus it's not going to be, um, uh, uh, it's not going to be too far in onto my words. So I'm happy with that so now I'm going to bring it to my project, lift my foot put my work underneath here is my line I'm going to line it up with the bullseye yeah drop the foot okay let's have at it really is, I really want you to get into the habit of having the exact same fabric that you're going to be using as your test piece so that you can test your stitches, your position, everything. This is the, this is vital to any kind of dressmaking um, um, projects that you're going to be doing. Let's just snip our threads here. And look, perfect. Now, um, I can't find, is it in here? Oh, it's okay. No, it's not. I had a really nice eraser which I can't find. Um, right, it doesn't matter. We'll erase that later. So I do want to show you this wonderful trick. Now, in terms of cutting open, to uh, open up your buttonhole, you're going to need your stitch ripper and a pin. So the first thing we do is we put the pin in at the top, right here. Right there. See? Right here. Lovely. Okay, now you're just going to place your stitch ripper right there, just pop it right through and let it slide into the little arc and then you're just going to work your way and work that steam ripper all the way up. Oh, you see? You see how close that could go to going out? That could have ruined your work there. Now, let us use, where's my button hole for now? We're going to stitch on. I actually like to stitch my, my buttons on by hand, so I'm going to do that and come back and then we show you the finished product. Okay, so I put the button hole in. I went over it again, but I put and I stitched the button on. I didn't go through the the pretty fabric. I only I sort of pulled it apart a bit, and I just went through the calico. So that way we don't have the stitching on the back. I did that off camera. So let's put our feet in. Moment of truth. So we've got our zipper foot that goes in here. We've got the piping foot which is really quite an awkward looking thing and that's the monogram that's the blind hem honestly because I'm so sort of like I just really want I really want that to go there but it isn't it is the way it is it's fine it's not a problem I'm going to put the buttonhole foot in here like that okay and here we go let's put our buttonhole on and that is our button pouch. Oh, I'm very pleased with that. It all fits. I did I did want to use poppers, but I thought that I don't know if people have the popper thing. But you're gonna have a definitely gonna have a button foot. So that is our button pouch. All done. I'm really proud of that, really pleased with that. It's a nice small project. It feels really nice. Really nice because the calico has given it some real body and there you go it even stands up <laughs>
Hey! <laughs> it stands up because it's got some body and it's got the weight at the bottom. So I guess you could just probably pop it there and then when you're move that out of the way and then when you're ready for it you go oh I need to pull the button on so you unzip it take your buttonhole out take that off pull it in there because you know that you're gonna put that back in and you just slip that on it is a fiddler isn't it and then you're ready to go don't want your buttonhole anymore take that off Move that out of the way, put your buttonhole back in its pouch, put your regular foot on, let's might as well hold before we go any further. And there we have it, your first, maybe this could be your first buttonhole that you've ever done. And that is our little pouch and it can sit any way you like. <laughs> I'm really pleased with that. I really hope you enjoyed that. You want to show me how? I really hope you enjoyed that. And it's a really nice quick make and it doesn't need an awful lot of um, fabric. You, you learn lots of new skills and I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. And it makes you not be so precious about things and you, you're learning how to use your, your letterings and, and, um, and your fancy little stitches and um, reinforcing stitches is what we've learnt today um, yes and we've learnt something and we've, we're using something that's really um, practical and lovely to look at so till next time I will see you in a week's time next Tuesday thank you for tuning in to Juliet Sewing Life I'm really proud of what we're working towards and to achieve and I really hope you make this and if you do please send your pictures into um, uh, juliet.sewing.life at gmail.com and I will put them on I'd show them on YouTube and I'll put them on the blog page because I'm really excited to see your work and I'm going to be really excited if people are just like oh just looks like a pouch what's what's so special about that I know what's special about that and I'm going to celebrate your wins. So until next time, I see you next week. Thank you. Bye.